I feel very proud to be an Indian. And I'm sure a lot of people feel. But corruption bothers me. And I'm sure you also spoke about it. Do you think spirituality can help get rid of corruption to some extent? So let's understand this uh, corruption properly in its right perspective. Rather than reacting against a bunch of people who are in an advantageous position, okay? <laughs> Why I want you to understand this is because for the first time in the history of independent India, these sixty-four years, that means two generations of people, they have at least fifty to sixty percent of them have had such a bad deal. Today yes. you and me, we'll talk all this and go home and eat well. Correct. There's a whole bunch of people, almost four hundred million people who cannot do that. So, if we handle the next five to ten years right, we can change that. It's a tremendous possibility which is on our threshold. There's an economic possibility sitting on the threshold. If we conduct this right, we can change their lives. Those people who have not eaten properly, those children who are malnourished, which have the highest level of malnourishment, those who are not educated, those who don't have opportunities, those who are in that horrible social and economic pit, their lives can change in the next five to ten years if we conduct our act right. Every Indian should understand this. It is not just about economy means stock market. It is about hungry people who will have food on their plate. Economy does not mean stock market, economy does not mean foreign cars coming into India, economy does not mean you wear better clothes or this and that. Improving economy means there will be no hungry children in the country, which is something all of us should do something about. And that possibility is being jeopardized. Wherever I go, I speak to various economic and political leaders around the world. Everybody says, we want to come to India, India is a big possibility, but the humiliation of corruption, we can't bear it. Because it's not just about money, they're willing to pay a percentage and get the work done, but the humiliation that they're put through on a daily basis, which we have gotten used to, they're not willing to go through that. They said, it doesn't matter if we don't do business, but we don't want to come there and go through all that rubbish. So, this possibility is being jeopardized by a handful of people or it is wrong to say it's a handful of people, it's a nation full of corruption. Correct. Because how many people in Mumbai streets, if there is no policeman, will stop at the red light? I think only ten percent will stop. So these ninety percent are corrupt people. If they make… if you make them the chief ministers and prime ministers, you know what they will do? So instead of just calling it by one bad word called corruption, we need to understand we as a society are trying to move from a feudalistic way of managing our lives to a democratic way. The democratic way has still not sunk into us. So I am saying in our psyche, we are still feudalistic in nature, but we are trying to run a democracy. Democracy will not happen with an active sense of education as to what is democracy, what is the power of democracy, what it means, what is the responsibility of living in a democratic society. This has not been done. We just took democracy from the British and we think if they just put their oat and get their fingers dirty once in five years, everything is settled. No, we have not educated people. We are still a feudalistic society acting to be democratic. Suppose